So with the fabrication projects that come through the shop, it's the time now where the engineering department and the fabrication department get together and go over the drawings that we've worked on so long in the office to get ready. Then they'll come out here, go over with the fabricators, make sure there's no contradictions on it because we're about to turn a 2D design into a 3D reality by building a sign. Right, and this SunTracks project is no different. It might even be worse. Yeah. Yeah. All right, come on guys, let's go check out this project we're about to do. The problem that we discovered is that the entry sign cabinet is only 10 inches wide and there's a lot that has to fit in there. So we have the steel tube with a metal saddle along with the two pieces of framework that go inside there and lights so we can light the face white and it all has to fit within 10 inches. So we have to figure out how to stack or change the pieces as they're inside these two pieces of frame. At 10 inches, I don't know how we're gonna service it. Could we do something for this top cap that's removable so that technically this can be removed and this can be removed for service if they so need to? Nope, that ain't gonna work. Is it possible that we can make this thing like that in this shape, and you slid essentially that into it. Somebody still has to get in here to weld the bottom, and that ain't gonna work. So these would have to be two, these would be separate, not as a cabin. I don't think so. If we have to remove one to work it out. No, but I still can bolt it in this. Oh, way. it's not gonna work. Because we're assuming that we can slide it over the pole. Oh shit, yep, that ain't happening. Which would mean there would need to be a four inch yep. space between these two. We don't have that. So it's gotta be 12 inches wide. Can't be 10. So the sign comp extrusion that we're using for the Panaflex, in order for us to have a pole that actually would be able to travel through that and not screw up the structure, we would have to make the entire cabinet deeper to achieve the same look that they wanted, but actually make it functional. So instead of... It was an easy problem to fix because it just had to be what it had to be. Justin just didn't want to change it on 150 different pages. True story. That, that's where we were at. That is a true story. That's why we were being re resistive to changing it. If we make it that wide, we don't have to skin it. Then you got four inches of access. You can get in there and put new lights, take lights out but it has to go to 12 and a half. So literally every single page would get changed. If we gotta change it, I've gotta change it. So what did you guys finally do? We made it 13 inches and told him this is how it has to be. And he changed it on every page. How did that make you feel? <laughs> I felt fine about it, that was good. Yeah. You hadn't built it yet, so no. Yeah, it was golden. Did anybody offer to give you a hug? No, I'm okay. I'm not a big hugger. So now that we're locked into the design changes, we can begin our fabrication. This is the letter S that I'm building. This is the cabinet that holds all these letters. It's double-sided. There's another set on the other side in which Robert's building this big box. This is the front base portion of the entry sign for Suntrax. It's the strongest aluminum box I've ever made. Right here is where that center, that entire center arch, it's a 25 foot arch, true half circle, so it's 12 and a half feet tall. It will line up and bolt onto this. The first fins line up and bolt into these, and then those pieces bolt together, and then the next fin bolts to this. There's a lot of overlapping attachment points. And then this center 13 inch framing also continues on the top. This is upside down. It also continues on the top where that arch comes down and it has the Panaflex face and frame and all that that I gotta make. All of this is prep work for everything to bolt onto it. Normally we would just cross frame it and skin the thing and that would be fine. But there's so much stuff that bolts onto that, you know, that 
that hole and that's why this one is here so close to the end because this is where the arch will come down and terminate into four inches from the end of this so there needs to be a framing member here to bolt into the end and then those will also run that way so that we can be bolting down the side of that to lock that Panaflex sign section down to this and then two more rows of framing will be run down here so that the SunTrax letter assembly can have continuous bolting all the way down. Yeah, it's gonna be a strong sign. So a few of the different size channel letters that we build, this letter here is five inches, which is pretty standard on most shopping centers, most storefronts, most of the channel letters that we do. This letter for Ed Hotels is eight inches deep. This is a standard letter for fifth floor, sixth floor, seventh floor, way up on the building. You're going to want to be able to see this letter. This letter would just, you wouldn't be able to see this from the ground. This is where it gets a lot larger. So the next size after this thickness of letter is this size. This, these are the set of letters I'm building now. These are 20 inches deep. Some of the smaller case letters are 16 inches deep. And I don't really have tools in the shop to build this. It's kind of difficult with radius corners. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. So this is a backer for the second of the two S's that you first saw, the ones that are 20 inches deep. I've measured this radius, just kind of close. It's about two inches. So that's how much metal I need to have that has to bend for that piece of metal to go around the corner. The square is exactly two inches wide. This metal is 20 inches tall. It's gonna be a tough project to get that to bend. This is a set of rings that I use when I bend the et letters or the other channel letters because this gives me my various radiuses. I can put the metal around the side and bend it exactly where I need it all the way down to a half an inch. I don't have 20 inch pieces of tubing. So let me show you what I've built. So this is the tool that I've made to bend this metal. I have a piece of tubing that is this radius. I put a bracket across the top with three hold down clamps spread out over 20 inches to hold my piece of metal when I bend it so that it doesn't move because I need that to be straight and square all the way across. I'm gonna lock it down so that it doesn't move. And then it allows me to use my body weight to begin to form the curve. And I'll move it down each time. So now I've completed the radius. Visually, it looks exactly like a 90, what I was after. So with just a little bit of forming, I made a perfect radius. So another fun thing that I have to do is, the height of that letter is five foot nine off the floor. Uh, my table is only 40 inches. So I need to use the forklift, clamp my pipe to that, and bend the letter up here, because it's too tall to bend on the table. Improvisation is where it's at. I only need the locks for the first part. So if a person's been building channel letters for a while, they have a bunch of tools you know, at their disposal, pieces of pipe, pieces of tubing, different pliers and sorts to build letters. What makes these a little more difficult is the 20 inch depth. These take time. As you can see, the height of this is twice what the other letters are. It's a little more challenging. And that's what makes it fun. That's what I like to do. This section has three steel poles in it. So they're all laid out for center. The cross framing is already in. I just have to weld in the Z bar and then weld the saddles up and bolt them in. The saddle is the interface between the steel pole and the aluminum frame. And then these saddles will bolt through centered and then that's where in that, you know, in the, the prints, that's where that first pole comes through the cabinet. So the poles and everything will all be on site and bolted down and leveled before we get there. And then using either a crane truck or our boom truck, we'll pick these pieces up and slide them down over the poles. Then we'll come back through and weld all four sides of this to the four x four pipe. This is the S that I completed earlier. Now I have to make some removal 
of the bottom portion of this letter so that it will sit on the front of the cabinet. So this artwork shows the bottom of this letter S actually hangs over the bottom of the cabinet. It sticks out four inches. And that's shown on this detail. And in order to make this happen, I literally had to build the letter entirely and then remove the other piece because I've had no idea which piece was being removed. Voila! So on the inside of this letter, I've drawn on the outside of it and now I've cut and added a false bottom and another false bottom here and welded those in so that this letter can sit on the top of that cabinet. Now that I have these plates in here and it is going to mount to the cabinet, so this is the piece that's going inside here to give it structure. So this piece probably weighs about 40 pounds and once I attach it to the back of the cabinet and to the top, a semi can drive through it and probably won't even scratch this letter. So the stage I am now, the 20 inch letters, I have to be able to put a false bottom in here. The LEDs all the way down here on the bottom will never shine this high. This piece of framework in the middle, can't put them on here. So I glued some tabs at five inches where I'm gonna put a false bottom in here. This is the exact preferred height of five inches from here to the face for my LEDs. These are the first two fins that go on the side of the cabinet. So I'm gonna start the second one because things that have to be identical, I try and build them as pairs so that they stay as close to identical as I can. For shapes like this, there's only two right angles in this entire shape. That's a 90 and that's a 90. Everything else is an odd angle. The design guys print out the template of how it, the shape it's supposed to be. I take all my measurements, I cut everything to that template. I'll cut everything in pairs so I can make two off of this. And then when I flip those over, I'll cut all of those measurements and angles again in mirror so that I can make the other side so I have two pieces to go together. So I'm laying, you know, that fin that I've already done is this one then I'll do this one and then this one. They all bolt together, but then in between them is this big radius piece, it's 13 inches wide, that these fins and these fins bolt up to. Steel poles and saddles and everything are inside that 13 inch piece, but curves are real easy for your eye to pick up if it's off even a little bit, that like, oh, this curve is nice and smooth, but then when it gets to here, if it isn't perfect in line with the rest of this curve, everybody's gonna see that. So this is kind of a big deal. You know, you and I have been doing this for 40 years almost. Yeah. And so we know, but it's still really cool to see what goes into making these big letters. Yeah, definitely. We hear a lot of people liking the fabrication episodes that we're doing, so I hope you enjoyed this one. It's definitely in-depth, but it's kind of cool, too. It's all this work going into the, just what you saw tonight is just for the letters, and that's just that little part of the big structure, yeah. right? Yep. So we've got the letters going. We've got the base, the base. going. The fins are rolling. So and next now, we got to build the arch that right. goes over top of that. So we're going to be exploring that, that next week. I hope you guys are enjoying the episodes. And um, next week's going to be kind of crazy. Yes. We're going to be able to keep track of how long it takes to build these kind of signs because yes. we're building them from scratch. Yeah, it is a really cool project. And thank you for watching the Media One Wrap This YouTube channel.